Okay, let's sit on our block and cross your legs. And if you feel unsteady sitting on your block, you also could sit on your cushion, your pillow. Get comfy here. When I sit on a block, I like to open up my ankles. So rather than having them crossed, I find I like to open them up so that I can get my knees to the floor. And to do this, I'm perched a little bit more forward on the block. So play with that. And as a reminder, you know, if your legs are like, oh, this is never going to reach the floor, you could put things up underneath your knees. Like if you have your pillow, for example, underneath one leg, you're good. Okay, hands on your knees, shrug your shoulders a couple times. And start to come into your breath. Close your eyes. Let's go through an exercise together where we lengthen our breath. So find your just normal breath to begin with. In and out. Striving to keep your lips lightly closed. Your jaw relaxed. And as you feel a sense of stillness settle over you as you take a moment to close your eyes and just bring the awareness to your breath. I invite you to start to bring this sensation in line with a feeling of gratitude. That whenever you take a moment of stillness, you have trained your mind to automatically turn to thoughts of what you are blessed with and what you are thankful for today. And this helps you find softness. We're gonna inhale and exhale for three, and then I'll guide you through four, and we'll just keep to continue to lengthen that out. So let's all start at the bottom of a breath and breathe in one two three pause here exhale three two one inhale one two three four pause here exhale four three two one inhale one two three four Five, pause here, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, shoulders down and back, inhale, one, two, three, draw this breath from the pit of your belly, five, six, hold here, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, add a little bit of vigor. Inhale, one, two, sip the air in, three, four, keep sipping, five, six, you may get to the top of the breath, seven, hold here, exhale, pace it, seven, six, five, four, three, two, all the air out, one, hold here. Inhale, sip it in, one, two, try to be steady, three, four, shoulders down, five, six, chin level, seven, eight, hold here, control the exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, we're going all the way to 10, inhale, one, two, pace this breath, four, five, six, seven, broaden your collarbones, nine, hold here, exhale, nine, eight, seven, compress your belly, five, four, three, all the air out, two, one, pause here, inhale, one, two, three, fill up, four, 
five, keep bringing breath in, six, pace yourself, seven, eight, nine, 10, longer pause here at the top of this breath, hold, 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 pace it, exhale, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, control it, five, four, three, two, one, stay at the bottom of the breath, wait, and open your mouth, take a normal breath in and a normal breath out. Good. Move around a little bit. Sweep your arms up to the sky. Interlace your fingers, press your hands up towards the ceiling. Take your arm bones back. Keep your left hip down, tip your body to the right just a little bit. Pushing your left hip down into your block or your seat. Pulling gently, left arm over to the right, keeping your hands together. Good, lift up, reach, reach, reach really long through your arms, right through center, and then push your right hip down as you lean towards the left. So think of the energy not being in the lean with your arms, but in the right hip pushing down. <clears throat> Take your elbows back a little bit so they go back towards your ears. Good, come back up through center. Relax your hands for a second. Just bring your hands down to the floor. Rest your hands maybe on tops of your thighs, palms up. So let's talk about that breathing that you just did for a second. So your fight or flight, you know about that, right? When you're stressed, you're in the fight mode when you're relaxed or you know, you're, you're more calm your um, fight or flight system is triggered by your sympathetic nervous system that's what makes your heart rate go up that's what makes you sweat that's what releases stress hormones which is useful when needed right so we could run away from predators but in yoga and with that breathing you are triggering the tone of your parasympathetic nervous system which is the nervous system that without you having to do anything, can lower all of those bodily functions, lower your respiratory rate, lower your heart rate, lower your vagal tone, which is what makes you like all tensed up. People get very tensed up and then pass out, right? So lowering the respiratory rate. So just doing that is one mechanism to try to help with a headache because when you get the vasodilation, right? That's the blood vessels opening up particularly in your, in your, to your brain, then you get this raging headache. And part of that is we need more blood flow, more oxygen when we're in that fight and flight response. So we're gonna focus on the parasympathetic nervous system that's making you calm. And you can do that, I mean, that's what the research shows is that actually just by breathing like that, you can control that tone, increasing the responsiveness of your parasympathetic nervous system. And for people who never do that, they live in a fight or flight state all the time. And that's what has deleterious stress effects on your body, right? So good job. All right, let's bring our hands behind our head. Interlace your fingers, gently put your hands on the back of your neck. Take your elbows out really wide and then gently press on the back of your head so you start to Pull your chin towards your chest. Now you can round your back a little bit here, but the goal is not to round your back. The goal is to find some release through the back of your neck. So keep your elbows wide. Just continue to bend your chin towards your chest, putting gentle pressure on the back of your head. You would find a place where you're somewhere between effort and ease and stay right there. Sometimes when um, we're moving slow, I know for me, I like moving fast. I like things that have a little more vigor in case you guys haven't caught on to that. So I have a tendency to get bored when I'm moving slow. If that is a tendency for you too, I invite you to really focus on your breath. Allow yourself the benefit of moving slow. Now, your thumbs are probably facing down. So take your thumbs and 
place them on the back of your neck so that now you can press into the sides of your neck right in those pressure areas so you can get a little bit of release while your head is pulled down. So you're pushing it onto the back of your neck. Chin to chest, let your thumbs press right into those pressure points at the base of your skull on the left and the right. And perhaps you can feel the tendons that you have along the back of your neck and the muscles there. I mean, think about how strong these muscles have to be to hold up this bowling ball on top of your body. So move your thumbs up and down that space that's along your neck. Pressing in here. This is what Alana was talking about, using a peanut to kind of release some of that pressure. But we're finding some length through the cervical spine, then bringing your chin to your chest. Walk your thumbs up and down that space a couple more times. Good. Release your arms. And let's come off of your block and bring yourself to a child's pose. So come around to your hands and knees. For those of you that came to class yesterday, um, we did a few tricep dips with our chair. Anybody else sore in their arms today? No, just yeah. the legs. <laughs> just the legs. Okay, my arms were a little tired today. All right, let's rotate the antecubital space. So rotate the eye of your elbow forward. Hug your belly in tight and exhale. Push to your downward facing dog. So if you already have a headache, it's not a good idea to do downward facing dog or any of the poses that are considered inversions. And downward dog is considered an inversion because you have your head hanging upside down. However, if you don't have a headache yet, doing down dog does bring a lot more blood to your brain. It changes the hemodynamics of your body because you are shifting this space and you don't have gravity just pooling. And your circulatory system has to work differently. Maybe you could say not quite as much because you're inverted here, all right, and not having to pump the blood up. So take a couple breaths here in your downward facing dog. Let your head just hang. If this is too much for your arms or for your wrists, you can always drop to your knees. Let's stay here for about three breaths. Big breath in, big breath out. One more breath. Lift up your heels so you come up to your tippy toes. Shift your body forward. We're going to our hands and knees. You're welcome to go through a plank on your way and then control this decline to the mat, knees down to the floor, and gently push back to your child's pose. For support of your head, try it today. You don't have to do it always, but take your block and put it in between your arms so that now your head has a landing zone. And let's just play with how that feels for today because child's pose with your head supported can be a way to open up through the back of your shoulders. So just soften into your child's pose. Let your elbows relax, but you can still have a reaching energy through your fingertips. Take a couple deep breaths here. Maybe on your block, roll from temple to temple. So just roll your head gently, but firmly on that block side to side. So you're kind of massaging your forehead. And I invite you here to just notice, are you holding a little bit of tension in your hands? Can you soften that, draw your elbows back a little bit? Maybe you have a tendency to clench through your hips or through your toes. Just anywhere you're clenching, let go. And then stop the rolling, just come to a place of stillness. And open your mouth just a little bit here. Find some softness as you take a couple deep breaths. Good. Let's come up to our hands and knees. 
and then bring your feet in and sit back on your heels. If it's uncomfortable for you to sit, like I'm sitting with your hips to your heels, take that little pillow you've got or your um, blanket, give yourself a little bit of space between your heels, okay, and your hips. Everybody okay? All right. Okay, so let's take our arms out wide. We're gonna do eagle arms without doing eagle legs. So here's my eagle arms, arms out really wide, reach through your fingertips. Now get a long straight spine right here before you do anything else. Lift through the crown of your head, almost like you're gonna lift up off your heels. So you've got a lot of energy through your torso. Bring your right elbow under your left and then bring your palms together. Good, good, Ruth. All right, now if this is too much, you can also just rest the backs of your hands together. Everybody looks good. All right, now lift your elbows up to chin height. But if you're bringing your shoulders up to chin height, drop your shoulders down, keep just your elbows lifted. Feel the difference in that. So if you're going all the way up here, bring your elbows up, but shoulders are pulling down. Good. So you're releasing a lot of that tension through your back and shoulders without stretching, right? This is more of an active opening by having to hold this bind. All right, if you're struggling, you might wanna back off of pushing your hands together, just bring them side so the backs of your palms are resting, or you can always adjust. Look, I'm just putting like my two forearms together. If you're okay, keep those elbows up and let's lean forward. So rounding your back. All right. So I'm not going forward like I'm going to the floor. I'm going forward like I'm going to hug my elbows into my chest. Good. Releasing through your shoulders, releasing through your back. So from the side, here's what I'm looking like. I'm really dropping in, rounding here. Good. Can you keep your eagle arms, hug your belly in tight, engage through your torso, lift back up. Now go the other way. Lift your eagle arms, open up through your back. So I'm still seated. Good. Open. Be mindful of your neck. So I'm not just focused on dropping the head back, but lifting the elbows. Lift your elbows. Lift your elbows. Take a full breath in. Good. Exhale. Come back to center. Release the arms. Use your down dog to stretch it out. So come up your heels. Push into your downward facing dog to stretch it out. <sighs> Bend one knee, then the other here and check in that your feet are about hip width distance apart. And just bend alternate knees and make your arms as straight as possible. Really good form on your down dog, Susan. Good. Good. Ruth, you can drop your chest towards your thighs a little bit. So think of softening your knees. Yes, there you go. And pushing back. Perfect. Good. All right. We're going to make our way just right like we did before. So inhale, tippy toes. We're going to our knees. You can get there through plank or just more gently shift forward. And then control it. Drop your knees to the floor. Sit back child's pose. If you'd like, grab that block. We won't be here quite as long this time, but you can always play with putting your head on the block. Roll your temple side to side. Think of every breath. Um, the exhale is what's important here. So you're Exhale is what is more important than your inhale and your respiratory cycle because you are releasing CO2. If you have CO2 and you can't exhale, you become acidotic, right? That's a medical emergency, a bad thing. So your exhale is what your body triggers. You can control this by finding a really deep inhale 
and a big exhale. Good, come off your block. Let's sit back on our heels to do eagle with the other arm. So support your space between your heels if you'd like. Take your arms out to the side. All right, reaching. Okay, I can't remember if I had you put right elbow under left last time. Does anybody remember? Is that yeah, what we, we did? did? Right under right. Under left. Okay, so now we're gonna do left under right, thank you. Okay, reaching right here, get really tall, and then here we go, left elbow under right, and then bring your palms together. Don't be surprised if one side is a little different than the other, you got different shoulder mobility. Now, no collapsing through the spine. Lift your elbows up, but keep your shoulders down, and take your gaze either with eyes closed and your energetic gaze is like you were looking at the tip of your nose. So even though you're not actually opening your eyes, as you close your eyes, imagine that you are looking down and center at the tip of your nose. Now feel your elbows lift, but your hips grounding down. Engage through your abdomen, draw your shoulders down so you're gonna get more of this active stretch, active opening by taking your shoulders down. Good. As a reminder, if this is too much, you don't have to have your palms connected. You could have the backs of your hands connected or just forearms. Now hug your belly in and gently start to round. Bring your elbows into your chest. So I'm keeping eagle arms just pulling in. Some of you are going to be able to pull in even more so that your head starts to drop as well, but keep your elbows hugged into your chest. Keep your hips pushing down. You're compressing through your chest a little bit, but lengthen through the back of your neck. Use your breath, never stopping. The capacity of your breath, even if you're changing how your body is formed and shaped. Good. Now use your inhale to prepare, and then on your exhale, travel back up. If your arms are suffering, you can undo it for a second and then come back in. We're going to go the opposite way. Engage through your belly and then start to lift up and back. Take your gaze up chest up, really opening through your ribs, lift your elbows. So that's the energy here. It's not thinking of your chest, your neck. Very nice, Susan. Very good, Marco. Lift through your elbows. Lift through your elbows. Good. And gently come back to center. Unwind. And put your hands on the floor, releasing your downward facing dog. Good job. <sighs> Pedal out your legs here. All right, we're going to do those eagle arms again, but in a standing pose. Oh. So from your downward facing dog, don't groan. Take no. your right leg up towards the sky. Take a minute here. Oh, stretch out that leg. Put your left heel on the floor. If this is too much, you can always drop a knee and just work it out right here. Good, take your right foot forward. If you wanna drop your left knee to get there, stepping your right foot through, that's fine. We're gonna all meet in our high lunge with right foot forward, left toes back. Now, anytime you're in a lunge, you can modify and you could even use a block underneath your back knee. So you're kind of an in, in between modification. So here I have a block under my back knee. I'm kind of in between, all right, as a modification, or you can be all the way up. All right, friends, we're gonna do the eagle arms. Same thing like we just did seated, but in the high lunge. It's kind of your call how much you work your legs here. So if you're really interested in more restorative today, drop that back knee, maybe use the block. And if you have a little fire and wanna work on toning your muscles as well as your parasympathetic nervous system, stand up. All right, shoulders down and back, squeeze through your glutes so you're engaged. 
arms out, sweep your right elbow underneath your left, eagle arms. Oh. Good. All right. Try not to clench your fingers. Try not to clench your jaw. Keep your mouth closed. Ready? Lean forward. Now you have more space. So some of you are going to come all the way down, bringing your right shoulder ah. inside of your right knee. Some of you are just going to want to go to about parallel, and that's going to be enough for you. Some of you might change your mind about that back leg right about now. Oh. <laughs> and be like, oh, maybe I'll just put that knee down. That's cool. All right, leaning forward, let your head hang. Remember, we're changing the shape of your shoulders, releasing tension through your neck. So pull chin to chest, struggle with your balance. Good, now use those core muscles, lift all the way back up, all the way back up. Keep your eagle arms if you can. Yep. All right, now we're going the opposite direction. Again, drop your back knee if you need to, and we lift. Lift the elbows, lift the elbows, stable by bending your right front knee, reach up and back. Lift the elbows, let the rest follow, lift the elbows, breathe. Good, steady, come back to center. Very good, unwind your arms. Everybody drop your left knee to the floor and straighten out your right leg. Enjoy a little stretch here. Slide your right foot forward and just relax your chin to chest so that you get some length through the front leg, but you also mm. get some opening through your neck. Oh. Oh. Uh. Your legs are tight. That's because we did um, 70, we did 70 squats yesterday, so that, that might be part of the situation, right? Good. Before we do the other side, we're going to go into fallen deer since our right leg is on the floor. So bring your right foot in like you're going to do pigeon. So bringing your right knee down to the floor, all right? But then just sit down. So here I am. Look, right foot forward. Bend your right foot in to the left edge of your mat, drop your right knee, but then instead of going back into pigeon, just kind of pull your left foot under, sit down. Uh, now I'm in this, I'm in this shape. Yep. If, you're, if your booty doesn't hit the floor, put it under, right? Put something underneath there. Okie dokie. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, this is fallen deer. Nice wide shoulders, fold forward. Maybe grab your block. It has different heights and you can put it underneath your head. You have to sit on. Oh, well then you need to switch, right? <laughs> Actually, I was gonna tell you guys, now that you have one block, you know, the next thing in your yoga collection is to have two blocks, right? <laughs> sit on my roller. <laughs> there you go. You can also stack your fists so you can make a little spot for your head. See if you can soften your right hip to the floor. Oh, that looks nice, Michaela. Oh, oh. Okay, gently put your hands on the floor. Come back up, move your block and your stuff to the side, come out of your deer, back into your hands and knees, and go to your downward facing dog. This is a great chance for you to feel that tucking of the toes, zip up your belly, and then lift the hips back in one fluid motion. Good, Ruth. Yes, good, Chris. Good shoulder alignment. Shake your head side to side, pedal it out. Appreciate the benefit here. So you sometimes can be doing something and you don't even realize what you're doing and you'll get more benefit if you have awareness also. So feel this dropping of your head towards the floor, pressing your chest back towards your thighs. This is bringing that inversion element to the practice, so you've got your head upside down, changing the hemodynamics. 
Take deep breaths. When you're ready, lift your left leg up. If you struggle when we're in one leg down dog, think of your arm bones doing some work. So you need to have straight elbows really pushing them out of way. All right, we're taking our left foot forward. You might drop your right knee to get there. You might just practice sweeping it through. We're taking left foot forward. Option to have right knee on the block or right knee up. Reclaim your breath. Meet me in your high lunge. All right, Alana, you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Arms out. Soften here. Excellent job. All right, here we go. Left elbow under right. Eagle arms. Again, you decide what's happening with your legs. As a reminder, the more your left foot is toward the left edge of your mat, the more stability you're going to have. And maybe you can get a little wider in your lunge here. Breathe. Okay. When you're ready, clench through your glutes and hips so you're stable in the bottom half. All right, and here we go, fold forward. Some of you are going to stop at the halfway point. Think about lengthening through the whole back, pushing off your back toe. Some of you are going to be able to drop this down inside of your left thigh and let your head hang a little bit more like a forward fold. Strong work in the left leg if you have that right knee lifted. Challenging your balance. If you're holding your breath, that's not helping you. Take a full breath. All right, use the muscles of your torso. Hug in, gently, slowly, controlled, lift back up. Reclaim your breath, reset if you need to, and then let's lift the elbows up. Ready, lift up, up and back. If you have your right knee on the block, you've got a little bit more room to open through your ribs. If your knee is up, those legs, the front knee bends to help give you a wide base. Lift the elbows, lift the elbows. Breathe. But gently, come undone, unwind your arms. Nice, drop your right knee to the floor. Exhale, straighten out your left leg, stretch it out. Oh. Find space here where you're getting length through the back of your neck. So it's like you're telescoping your body forward while dropping your left hip down. So think of that. It's like I want to pull the crown of my head forward, but then I'm also the counter stretch oh. to that is I'm pulling this left hip down, trying to pull chest to thigh. Very nice. Good. Okay, let's bring ourselves to fallen deer. So I'm bending my left knee, scooting it across to the right edge of the mat, drop your left knee to the floor, like you're doing pigeon, but just sit down on your left hip and your right knee bends. Okay, good, yes, all right. Use your stuff to help hold you up here. And then let's fold forward. Flat back, maybe using the block or your hands as a resting place for your head. If you haven't noticed, you're all connected. So even when you have a lot of tension through your neck, that radiates into your shoulders, it could be triggered by tightness in your hips that then causes some tension and shortness through your back that then pulls down on one shoulder more than the other, causing the opposite side of your neck to tense up. So you're all connected. So sometimes to do a release, even just of the shoulders, you've got to get all the way through the back of your body and through your hips. But if you need to adjust, I mean, you know what you feel, move that block around so that you feel like you're really able to get as flat of a back as you can in your forward fold here. Oh. 
job. Take one more deep breath in. Deep breath out. Good, and then sit all the way back up. Keep your left leg right where it is. Put your right leg out. Right, if this is hard, sit on your pillow. So just by elevating your hips, it's gonna make a difference for you. And since we're being a little more gentle today, then why not try it, right? So sitting on your blanket or your pillow, if you like, your block is a little too high. Right leg up, good. Put your right hand on the outside of your left head, left head, your, your left ear, <laughs> and gently pull your right ear towards your right shoulder. So I'm pulling right ear towards right shoulder, good. Now let's check in with this right leg. Is there a little space for you to move that right leg open a little bit? Still keep your toes lifted, good. Oh. You can feel all these cords right here opening up. Yep. Good. Release your right hand. Start to drop your right elbow to your thigh. If it doesn't quite get there, use your block underneath your right elbow to your right thigh. Take your left arm over. I like to pluck, kind of extend my right arm so it's just resting on my leg. And I'm using the block underneath my right elbow just for a little extra grounding. Imagine that I come and I grab your left wrist and just gently give you like a little, little, little tug. Good. Come back through center and let's go forward. Let's use the block forward. Some of you are just going to put your hands on the floor, still pressing your hip bones back. That's as far as you go. Be mindful you're not rolling in this front right foot. All right. It still stays up towards the ceiling. Some of you are going to be able to soften and get your head to the block. All right, good. Everybody's got hands to the floor, at least. So play with that. This is where, you know, if you had two blocks, you could stack them, right? Yeah. <laughs> like a T. Your family's going to be like, gosh, next you're just going to want a whole yoga studio here in the house, huh? Oh. <laughs> You're improvising. Oh, the roller. That's a good idea, Chris. That's a good idea. Oh. Straight up roller. That's a good idea. All right. One more breath here, Chris. Good. Can you back up slowly? So I'll come all oh. the way up. Shrug your shoulders a few times. Work around your neck. Before we move, just turn and look over your right shoulder. So now you're just getting this lengthening through this part right here. So rather than dropping shoulder, ear to shoulder, I'm just turning my chin to look over the right. And now the energy is left shoulder pushes back. So left shoulder pushes back, gaze to the right. <sighs> Good. Come back up to center and let's switch the way your legs are. So bending your right knee. Left leg out. Good. Use your left hand. Reach over to the right side of your head and gently start to pull your ear. Left ear towards your left shoulder. Be mindful if you are um, 
collapsing here through your upper back. See if you can sit up. Always think of lengthening your spine. Always lengthening your spine. Good. Notice what's happening with your left foot. Toes up towards the sky. Maybe you have an opportunity to open up that left leg a little bit more. Oh. I like to put my right hand on my right side. Help kind of provide a counter pressure there. Good, Marco. Nice, Alana. Beautiful, Hannah. Oh. Breathe here. Good. Let's release the left arm now, bringing elbow to thigh, maybe reaching your hand towards your ankle, perhaps using a block underneath your elbow, and lift your right arm up and over. Really thinking about your right hip staying down. As you reach through this left side. Maybe there's a little space for you to just have this gentle tug through your right wrist. Softening your left elbow, taking your arm bone back a little bit on your right arm. <laughs> Good. Gently bring your right hand down. Come back to center and then let's go forward. Ready? Taking your body forward. I think the roller underneath your head is a great idea. It's about the right height. So if you want to try that. <sighs> Take a deep breath in. You can always move your left leg in a little bit more if you're struggling to keep it at that far out. If you're hunching and you're and you can feel that you're bringing your tips of your shoulders more up towards your ears, I want you to back out a little bit so that you can get your head pulling down, but your shoulders pulling down and back. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Good, and gently come back up. And let's swing our legs array around and we're gonna make our way onto our back. So the study that I was talking about was published in um, May of 2020. Lay down on your back, ah, hug your knees into your chest. In the journal Neurology, which is a very um, you know, prestigious journal, by the American Academy of Neurology. And they did a randomized study with 160 people who had a history of episodic migraines. Put your feet on the floor here, hold on to the edges of your mat. If you'd like, you could put a block in between your knees. If that helps you find some alignment, we're gonna to go to bridge pose. So pushing that hips up towards the sky here. I like to hold on to the edge of my mat just for anchoring. and. Think of drawing your shoulders down into the floor as your hips lift. Toes are light, heels are holding you up. Neutralize your chin. Close your eyes. We're gonna stay here for a bit, so anytime you need a break, just lower your hips down, take a big breath, and then come back up. Think of this as being an opportunity to find alignment through your spine, releasing tension. So they randomized the people. They all still got medical therapy for their headaches, but one half of the participants also received a four week intervention of doing yoga and learning yoga. And then were asked to continue the yoga for another, I think three weeks after their four weeks of classes. And the people who had yoga in addition to the medical therapy reported less usage of the medical therapy, fewer headaches overall, and an increased benefit of the medication when they needed to use it. 
Again, if you need a break from your bridge pose at any time, just drop your hips to the floor and you come back up. We're here for a couple more breaths. And the speculation about you know, why that helps is reducing stress, improving blood flow, increasing awareness so that you start to anticipate when you're going to have a headache rather than not being able to know physically what to do to be able to um, have a practice that helps you to mitigate that headache. Lower your hips down to the floor, everybody. And let's windshield wipe your knees side to side. That was a good long bridge. Good job. Move your block out of the way if you had it between your knees. But it's that tone as well to the vagal nerve and to your parasympathetic nervous system that also then helps um, moderate the changes that you have. So women in particular, as you get older and your hormones fluctuate, then that comes with some vascular changes. So your blood pressure can go up and down more erratically, or you could vasodilate, meaning opening up your blood vessels and that could trigger dizziness, hot flashes and headaches. So this breathing and moving and yoga is very helpful in moderating that erratic change, right? That's what tone means. It means that you don't have as much of that erratic change. It's more stable. Let's take happy baby. Hug your knees into your chest. One foot or both, bend your knees, reach for the outsides of your feet. And then pull your knees towards your armpits. Take the soles of your feet up towards the sky. Straight arms here. Good, and rock a little bit side to side. The other thing that... Um, I think is really interesting and Eduardo and I really believe this is part of the practice of, I guess, lifestyle medicine is the con concept that doing yoga helped improve the benefit of the medication. And so think of that, your physical activity, your mindfulness and your overall well-being can actually help the medicines that we do have to work more effectively rather than just relying on the pill alone. Can we do this in conjunction? And they work better. Bring your hands off of your legs. Let's point and flex your feet. Feet up towards the sky. Across the board, one of the best poses for a headache is legs up the wall. So if you'd like, you can find a wall or a piece of furniture or just anything that you could prop your heels on. Or you could just elevate your hips here. It's really nice to put that pillow up underneath your hips just for a little extra support through your back and just take your legs up. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out. If you're thinking always of neutralizing your spine, it starts right at the back of your neck. So just check in here of how you're holding your head. Are you pointing your chin up towards the ceiling? or are you crunching your chin too much to your chest? Can you kind of move your head so that you are perfectly neutral? And then take your arms out wide, let your palms be up. Close your eyes. Find your breath. Let's close our practice with a few more of the measured breaths. We won't go all the way to 10. We'll go to six. Ready? Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. 
five, exhale five, four, three, two, one. Last one, stay at the bottom of this breath and inhale one, two, three, four, five, six. Stay at the top of this breath and control it. Exhale six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower your heels to the floor. Oh. Take a big stretch, fingers to toes. As long as you can get. And roll over onto your side, whatever side faces your computer, your iPad, just roll over onto your side and then make your way gently and slowly up to a seat. Once you get there, bring your hands together at heart center. Close your eyes. I invite you to close your practice today by thinking of something tangible, something, something real that you are thankful for today. Today, not in the past, not just an idea or a memory, but something today that you are thankful for. Let's bow our head together. The light in me honors the light in each of you. Thank you for coming to yoga today. Namaste. Thank you.